Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for joining us today on Condo Insider. I'm really excited to have with me as my guest, um, Mike Goljush with um, Palihua Townhouses. He's also one of my fellow um, HCCA um, board members. So he's been on board with us for a couple of years now. So today we're gonna to talk about um, a con what a condo um, board duty and responsibilities are. So it's gonna be the two of us having this conversation. Um, I often get a lot of questions especially after a seminar about what exactly a board member is supposed to do, especially for the new ones, the newbies that come on board. So um, we're going to start off with um, going through some of the um, statutes. So where does it all start? So um, we're on um, our slide number two. So it, you know, and actually it started when the, um, the potential home condo owner signed that purchase agreement. Because we're, even though we're not on the board, we still have to comply with all the governing documents, the declarations, the bylaws, the house rules, all the, and if you have covenants, you know, like some areas have, have certain things that you can and cannot do around the property. So it really starts with knowing that. And then also um, reviewing the, um, the Hawaii revised statutes 514B or 421J. 421J applies to uh, plan unit uh, communities like ever by Gentry. So, um, so Mike, I want to really thank you for being on board with us. So um, you've been a board member for a long time. So what would be your, your suggestion for people to start with? Start with, I really recommend they read their declarations, as they call them, the DCC and R's, so they know what their association, what, what they're required to do by not only 514B, which is the law, but what their own association needs to do. And besides that, they also need to review and their bylaws that have run their association. And um, by doing that, then going back to review 514B helps them out a lot in knowing what their responsibilities are for a board member. There's other things too, but I mean, those are the basics. And of course, Condo Insider has a lot of good programs that could help them out too. <laughs> but, uh, People don't really understand what they are. And I know it's coming up what a fiduciary is and that type of thing, but uh, it's all important to understand the rules first. Okay. As a board hey, member. Next slide. So this, you mentioned fiduciary duty. So here's 514B 106, which is the board powers, duties, and limitations. So it's highlighted in here, in, um, it's bolded, that um, each board member owes the association a fiduciary duty and to exercise the degree of care and loyalty that's required of an officer or director of an organization under Chapter 414D, which is the Nonprofit Corporation Act. So we actually have several statutes that, not just 514B, we have 414D, not to mention, I think we have to also do fair housing. But, you know, if you don't comply, then you're going to be in breach of your fiduciary duty, right? right. So um, along with fiduciary duty, so next slide, is um, really the explanation. You want to kind of review what a fiduciary duty is? Well, be, I can't see that. Slide. Okay. <laughs> so really, a fiduciary duty is like is an individual who, who, in whom another person has placed the utmost trust and confidence to manage and protect property or money. Mm -hmm. So how would you apply that? Or how would you apply reading of it? Well, for me, it's to understand your budget, what your condo association has set aside for their normal maintenance, but also their reserves, because you have to be able to pay for things in the future, and you have to look out what's best for the association, and that's what's best for individual homeowners or yourself as a homeowner. You have to look out for the responsibility of the overall association so that you're doing things and having the money to do the necessary repairs in the future. And we've seen what's happened when, for one reason or another, uh, association has not been able to. There's special assessments or there's a big loan that has to be taken just because funds weren't there to do the projects that needed to be done. And some people do get on the boards to figure out, oh, I'm going to stop raising maintenance fees. I mean, I've heard of that one before. And yeah. that's, no, no, that really is not That's a red flag already. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because I've told even our board, I said, I'd rather see a five, $10 yearly increases versus a five or $10,000 special assessment. That's true. You know? I mean, it's just incremental, you know, so it's not going to, you don't really feel the five or $10, so to speak, 
right. versus if you have to come up with a five or 10,000, man, that's really going to hurt your pocket, you know? Right. That's true. So when we lead, learn into, so we go, as we go into fiduciary duty, we also have to realize as a fiduciary, we have to um, watch out for conflicts of interest. That is true. So um, the actual um, definition by statute of conflict of interest is used um, as it's a means in which um, an issue in which a director has a direct personal or pecuniary interest not common to other members of the association. So um, it has to be disclosed, that relationship. True. Right? And I've had it on our board that some people have had to disclose that, hey, one of the contractors you're considering, I know the person personally. And they'll recuse themselves in voting on that particular thing. They, exactly. Yeah. Or even hiring, hiring an employee. Right. Um, yeah. They used to be my tenants way back when they're fine, but really, you really should have no conversation regarding right. that person. Right. That's true. And um, one of the main things, because even 421J, if you're in a PUD, like a MOI Gentry, you right. have to disclose the nature of that. And then you also cannot vote on that issue. But you got to make sure that that disclosure is recorded in the meeting minutes, right? Yes, definitely. And it's it's important. And, you know, and especially in the condo, sometimes, you know, board members, just like others, need to have things that they want to do to their unit that need to have board approval. And you need to disclose, hey, this is my unit and uh, I will not be voting on this. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, Let's go to the next slide. Um, so the responsibility, so now you're on the board. So what exactly is your responsibilities? So we have like things to do, like the upkeep of the condo property. So we have to deal with all the common elements, the landscaping, painting, parking lots, if you have a pool, and you have to do basic cleaning around the property, you know, sweeping up, whatever, picking up the trash. Then the other big responsibility is the fiscal. We got to deal with the budget and the reserves. Plus the insurance requirements. That's right. So it's our responsibility to um, to learn how to read the budget, which could be an experience in itself in the very beginning, <laughs> and then it's experience itself to get to understand how to read the reserves. You know, and we don't. I don't think everybody expects you to get it in the first time. It kind of takes a little while to kind of get the hang of reading the budget, going through the reserves, and how they all play together. You know, and then with the budget and reserves, then we start doing. The, the assessments for maintenance fees, figuring out how much or how much maintenance fees are going to be for the year, right? And I would, I would, I would like tell anybody if they're boasting to me that they haven't raised maintenance fees in a couple of years, I'd be like, something's wrong with your property. <laughs> I agree with you. That's true. Even if it's a small amount, um, I've heard that over and over again, and it's true. People don't like to raise them, but if you don't raise them a little bit. You may be raising them a lot. <laughs> yeah, because I don't like the $20 jumps. I'd rather have five and 10. I don't right. like the $20 jumps. It's, <laughs> it's, you know, it just is really scary, you know? And, and truthfully, when I first got on the board, that happened to us. They had relied on some funds that had come in from a settlement, and they hadn't looked at really the maintenance fees and all the other aspects. So when I got on, we had a fairly sizable jump in maintenance fees because we had to. We, to Cover the reserves and maintenance that was needed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we also have the responsibility of maintaining certain records. So, you know, even though a lot of the records are with the managing agents usually, but still we have to make sure that certain ones are maintained and that they're available to owners upon request according to the procedures that are set up for that. Right. And then um, we also have to make sure that there's the rules compliance. So making sure our declaration bylaws and then the house rules and also the other other architectural stuff are all being complied with. Um, so we have to make sure, and even with that is hard, the rule, rule enforcement, that alone is a challenge in itself. You know, making sure everybody's window coverings are all white. They're not storing a bunch of stuff on the lanai where it right. looks like someone's living there. I mean, you know, another bedroom, extended bedroom, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, what other things can you put in as, as a board member that, that you've seen challenges on with rule compliance? Like I said about rules compliance, uh, you know, things like picking up dog feces, uh, you know. In fact, if you want to change the rules, you can change it that the owners have to pay for a DNA test. So if you need to, that you can follow up to find out which dogs may be doing that. You know, those are that's just one thing. But um, 
Are they keeping their area squared away? You know, what are your rules about what can be stored in front of the doorway or can't be? What can be on lanai's and uh, other things like that? And it, in a recent uh, fire inspection we had, a couple of people still had barbecues up on the second lan upper lanai, and they can't do that. Yeah, it has so, to be five feet away from a building or a wall. Right, right. Uh, so, and then, and we're also responsible for the uh, for the upkeep, the repairs. Right, right? that's true. Yep. Repairs comes so, with painting. Yeah, we've been painting, replace siding, uh, the, the sprinkler system. That's an ongoing battle with our our. We've got a good resident manager though, because he can do all of that. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, no, there's things we have to contract out too, but the things he can handle, he does, and he does a good job of it. But yeah, you're right. All the different maintenance things. He's doing some side rock repairs because we don't want the tripping hazards, things like that, you know. Right. And it right. varies. And ours is a townhouse, so it's more flat, but, you know, high rises, they've got their own issues that they have to worry about, whether it's elevators or uh, parking spaces underneath or whatever, the lighting for that, et cetera, et cetera, that goes on. Yeah, I had to tell someone they couldn't keep their shoes outside, outside the door because it was a trip hazard. And they were kind of upset. I go, no, you have no idea. That's why you can't have mats outside, no footwear outside, anything where someone can trip. I go, you know, I go, even in my house, I'm like, tell me, the shoes go against the wall. Not where I need to walk and trip over. And, you know, some people got like big feet, you know, I feel like I'm walking over boulders, you know. <laughs> and the other part of our responsibility is as board members. And even the employees that we hire need to welcome our owners, make them feel that they're part of the community. You know, right. we have to comply with all the fair housing, ADA, pets, you know, all of those things, you know. That's true. You're right. And we, um, our resident manager gets a hold of them quickly so that they're welcomed and then, and also has them fill out the things so we have an emergency contact for them and we have their car information so that we know it's theirs so they don't get towed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big thing, don't get towed. <laughs> okay, let's move on to um, uh, onto the next slide, which is, um, wow, we need to know a lot. It's almost like we need to go to college to learn how to be a board member, right? There's a lot of things we need to know, but it's not like we have to be experts in those fields, right? Um, we can hire professionals to help us, you know, so like, um, like I would not know how to measure the chemical balance of a pool. I just kind of know that they got to do certain things. It's got to be a certain color or something like that. Right. You know, <laughs> so it's not like you have to, and then plus two, there's other resources available to even, um, to help you learn some of the things that you need to take. Like with Hawaii council, we have our seminars four times a year. And then once a year, we do a, a, an all-day board of director training. You know, um, we just had it, what, a couple months ago, last month? But there's a lot of educational things that you can, you can take. Our seminars are only like, what, 90 minutes, you know, four times a year. Um, every once in a while, we might add in a new one. If, if it's a hot topic, something that we really want to get the word out to everybody. Um, what other ways can they learn? Um, Condo Insider, that's one. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. no, and going and talking to other board members from other associations. We've done that in the past. I mean, we actually made a couple of trips out to Milwaukee and went to a couple of board meetings there. Yeah. You know, we thought beforehand, so we were invited to be there. So reading and studying up on these things and, and going to the seminars is really important. And I think when we can get back into in-person seminars, those would be so valuable because you can talk to other people, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, really the networking you get from attending the in-person ones, if we can ever get back to it, um, is, mm -hmm. is really, really good. Very important. It is. Oh, yeah. When you're sitting around that table, you find out a lot of information and they find out information from you, you know? It's, it's you know... Surprising what people do or don't know it. When you're yeah, it, it's a good way to find out what works and what didn't work, you know. Um, and people were really getting to the point that they were welcoming and looking forward to the next seminar so that they can meet up with their other people that they've, they've um, engaged in, right? That's true. Okay, so let's go on to the slide, business judgment rule. So as board members, we need to exercise our independent judgment. Just because everybody else on the board 
you know, you're new to the board, you know, and you see the little clicks or whatever, you know, and everybody seems to like go into one direction, but you're like, no, that doesn't seem right. You know? Um, and so you vote against, you, you say, no, my, my opinion is no, this is not good for us. You know? So you have to be able to really exercise your, your business judgment rule. Don't vote just because everybody else is voting the same way. It's okay to be the other guy that says no, right? It, correct. And, and we have people and that happens, and I'm glad that it does happen. So it makes us all think again, you know, hey, was that the best decision? And maybe overall, we still in the majority think it is, but it's good to be thinking of different opinions and, and viewpoints on, on different topics. And, uh, and it's like the budget review. And are you following up on delinquencies? And have we heard recently from our attorney or or however we're handling getting the checking up on delinquencies? Now, one of the one crazy comment that someone told me was that their um, the um, board had asked the reserve study specialist to review um, a repair estimate, a mm -hmm. request for proposal. I go, he does reserves. How, he doesn't know about plumbing, you know, or siding repair. How, he's not the expert that you would seek advice from. You know, you would really seek advice from um, from maybe an attorney that has that construction litigation experience. And plus, too, it should go to the attorney anyways to review that contract, right? Yes. You know, and you always got to have a scope of work. Make sure that that scope of work is detailed out so everybody knows they're all on the same play, same playing field. You know. What other advice would you give a new board member? Their advice? Um, really talk to, not just to your own board members, but find out other ones. That's why it's important to, when we have in-person sessions or even the ones that are online to attend so that you listen, pick up information. Uh, so as you read through some of these documents, sometimes the first time you're in, they don't make any sense at all to you <laughs> until you've had a chance to talk to people and see it in action and ask questions. And I mean, that includes talking to your managing agent, your resident manager on a discussion basis, not that you're their boss or anything else in that aspect, but you know, trying to find out what's going on in your particular uh, association to make it better for you and understanding. In fact, one of the things you could do, and you can ask for them, and some associations have them online anyway, go pat through past minutes and see what has been passed, what hasn't, uh, what actions have been taken by the board. Yeah, and, go, and that's your opportunity to go back and read the history, kind of like a history of that right. association. Like, why did they not, why did they choose, you know, to paint this one area yellow versus the rest of the area is, is, is like a brown, but, but this one section is yellow? Could be a really good reason, you know, like they wanted to highlight that area because of, you know, maybe because the lighting is not good. So if they put a lighter paint, it's going to be easier for the other lighting to kind of like, you know, blow off of it, you know, that kind of right. stuff. Stuff that it doesn't seem um, that we may not think the reasons why, but once we understand why the board did something previously, then it could actually make sense, you know, um, you know, like a certain kind of landscaping, you know, they, 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 they really want the certain kind of plant because number one, it's low maintenance or, you know, the sun hits it. And that type of plant is perfect for the sun, especially if you're on the West side, or if your property gets this, the um, afternoon sun, you don't want to put yeah. a plants there that take a lot of water, but now you're wasting water, so to speak, you know, and, and the type of trees oh, we've, right. we've had to take some trees out because of damage they were doing, but we wanted to replace with other trees that would grow, but you know, not cause that kind of damage. Right. Yeah. So it's really good to learn that that background so that you're you you're informed and you're not fighting with the board because there's there's decisions are always based upon reasons. Um and, and maintenance and upkeep is always going to be at the top of the list of one of those reasons, you know. You're correct. Uh, there <laughs> and and people, you know, if they're new on it, they don't understand, you know, some of the things that have gone on in the past and and that's why it's good to have new board members, but it's also good to have people that have been around for a while so that, you know, they can discuss and give reasons why things have happened in the past and new people. So maybe they'll see some new directions or new ideas that, that are helpful to right. in the association. Right. You know, and um, 
I always tell, I always remind some old board members. I said, you know, we always have to remember what we were like when we first started, you know, and you know, you've been on here a couple of years now. So you already kind of know everything. I mean, how it works, but Mm -hmm. uh, we have to be welcoming to the new ones because not all of us want to be here forever. You know, you want new (laughs) blood in there. Sometimes new blood can bring in new ideas that we never even thought of, you know, so you really want that. I always try to get, make everybody feel like they're welcome you know, to have their input. Um, True. You know, like, a, a, what do they say out of the mouths of babes? You know, same yeah. thing. Really brand yeah. new. Right. <laughs> Something, you know. Yeah. So if, any other closing remarks about, uh, on, on what you want to offer to a, board, a new board member? Attend the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Show up. Yeah. Show up. Yeah. <laughs> Show up, yeah. <laughs> because that, that's very important, you know. And each board is a little different. Ours meets basically monthly. There's some done, we don't. But normally, other associations I know only meet quarterly. But whatever it is, show up, be prepared, read those minutes before you show up to the minute meeting. So yeah, that, yeah, you know, there's a lot of time there. So you have your questions. If you do have questions, what's going on? Um, yeah, review the minutes and take your notes. If you see something that was like, well, I don't remember this, but take your notes and bring yeah. it to the meeting. You know, but you really should. Be prepared and review that board packet before you actually go into the meeting. I mean, it takes like 30 minutes to go through the packet um, unless you have like some proposals and stuff like that that came in, you know, that's making the packet a lot bigger. But, um, you know, it's you're you have to conduct yourself in a business manner. This is a business. You need to run it like a business. So you need to be informed and ask the questions. And like I say, no question is a stupid question. Right. Right. Um, so and one question I always have them ask, you know, if they have a contract coming up, if there's not three bids, you always want to ask the question, why didn't you get at least three bids? That's just a standard. We try to follow that. Now, there's sometimes there's a reason why you don't have three, but uh, have it come out and then decide whether you want to push again for more bids or go with what you have. Right. Right. Yeah. Any other closing things you want to give some of our newbies? I call them newbies. <laughs> no, um, engage, you know, be there. You know, you're going to have your questions. You're going to wonder why they're doing things a certain way. And you may have some ideas. Bring them forward. You know, get them out there. You know, some people, it's the old inertia. They'll just stay going the same way unless, you know, something gets in there and people start asking questions and, bringing up things and looking at it a different aspect. I think that's very important to, to have that input. And so that, you know, you're engaging the other board members and making them think sometimes, you know, cause they've gotten stuck in their ways. <laughs> okay. I, I, uh, I, you know, I really appreciate you being on here with me, Mike. Um, cause I think this is kind of be, can be one of the first, um, um, I'm actually going to forward this to someone because she's new to the board and she's a board president. <laughs> so, and that's a big project too. I'm like, holy smokes, you took a big, big thing in your retirement, you know? <laughs> and so this is going to be my first one that I'm going to send to her. I go, you need to read, look at this one, review this one, you know? But um, I really want to thank you because our time is coming, coming to a close. So Mike, okay. I really appreciate you being um, on my, on the show for me today. Um, and going through it. I think it's always good to hear it from experiences from other board members, seasoned board members on what it's like and what we need to do. Um, So we hope to see you guys, um, you people um, again next Thursday at three o'clock for another Condo Insider. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.